As rockets become more and more powerful, the systems that support them need to keep pace. SpaceX Starship is an extremely powerful design, and it'll be the most powerful booster ever built. And the extreme heat, sound pressure, and acoustic vibrations must be controlled to protect the Starship and the launching pad. The moment of launch is a dangerous time for any rocket due to the incredible energy released. With all 33 Raptors at full throttle, Starship can produce almost 7,600 tons or 16.7 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. And that beats the previous record holder, the Soviet N-1 rocket, by nearly 60%. Importantly, along with the heat produced, there's an extreme amount of acoustic energy, which is nearly double that seen, heard, and felt on an Artemis I launch. To control all that energy and keep crew and equipment safe, SpaceX now had no other way than to employ the water deluge system. Let's find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. When considering modern spaceflight technology, one might immediately consider the SpaceX rocket ship company founded by Elon Musk. Initially created in 2002 with the express intent to colonize Mars, SpaceX, also known as Space Exploration Technologies Corp., has become one of the leading manufacturers of aerospace vehicles and parts. The company has made considerable advancements in rocket engines and reusable parts, helping bring down the cost of manufacturing and space missions. Especially after 20 years of research and development, Elon Musk continues to pursue his urgent mission to colonize Mars. He intends to do this with his largest project, Starship. The Starship is the biggest rocket in history at 400 feet tall and weighing 5,000 tons. Also known as the BFR, Big Falcon Rocket, the Starship is designed to deliver payloads as heavy as 250 tons. This helps deliver the massive amount of materials needed to build spaceports on the Moon and Mars. Starship will accomplish this feat with state-of-the-art spaceflight technology, including reusable parts, specially designed engines, and one of the largest boosters ever created. There are unprecedented things in human history, and obviously it's insanely difficult. Build Starship, that's only one part. Launching it is more crazy. There are two big problems with acoustic energy during a rocket launch. Sound pressure waves hitting and damaging the launch pad. Sound being reflected off the launch pad and hitting and damaging the vehicle. If you look at the launch mount at Bachnur, you'll see that the vehicle is actually suspended over the side of a cliff of a man-made crater. As the result, SpaceX recently shipped Starship Deluge hardware from Florida to Starbase. Captured live by NASA's spaceflight webcam, hardware began accumulating at NASA's Kennedy Space Center Turning Basin on January 12. Within a few days, four mid-sized storage tanks, two or three large storage tanks, five high-pressure gas tanks, multiple sections of an apparent launch day loose system, and an unfinished Starship booster transport stand were all staged and ready for shipment. Save for implicit statements from reliable sources, there wasn't an obvious guarantee that the hardware was all SpaceX's or headed to the company's Starbase Texas factory and launch site. But combined with the sheer volume of hardware and its privileged presence on NASA KSC property, the last part to arrive, the base of an unmistakable Starship booster transport stand, all but confirmed that the destination is Starbase. SpaceX has already shipped hardware from Florida to Starbase multiple times, including a trio of tanks sent in October 2022, which further increases the odds that everything visible is destined for Starbase. It might also not be a coincidence that in its first attempt to build a Starship launch site at Kennedy Space Center, SpaceX installed four mid-sized tanks and plenty of high-pressure gas tanks at LC-39A. The resurgence of work on a totally different Starship pad design at 39A in late 2021 likely made that hardware redundant. It's possible that the four smaller tanks set to be shipped to Starbase originated at 39A and are being moved in the hopes that they can be more useful elsewhere. Additionally, satellite photos taken on January 3, 2023 and shared by Harry Stranger shows a pair of larger tanks also sitting unused at Pad 39A. Ultimately, it's almost certain that the delivery is SpaceX hardware bound for Starbase, Texas. Almost all rockets use some sort of deluge system to prevent their own exhaust from damaging or destroying themselves or their surroundings. 
A large volume of water sprayed into the space just below a rocket's engines can prevent the immense acoustic energy or sound they produce from wreaking havoc. A deluge also helps protect launch pad hardware by allowing some of the energy in the exhaust to boil and vaporize water instead of eating into concrete or steel. But CEO Elon Musk has infamously stated that SpaceX is intentionally attempting to build an orbital launch site that doesn't need a flame diverter for Starship, the most powerful rocket in history. That's gone about as well as one might expect. Even Starship, which can produce about 18% as much thrust as Super Heavy, has repeatedly incinerated the concrete beneath the test stand, spreading molten debris for thousands of feet and starting major brush fires in a nature reserve. After every six-engine Starship static fire, SpaceX must painstakingly remove and replace all of the concrete beneath the test stand. The problem's even more apparent at Starbase Orbital Launch Mount, where SpaceX has begun to conduct super-heavy booster static fire tests. Thus far, SpaceX has had to replace the concrete under the OLM after almost every super heavy static fire, a process that takes a week or two. The company recently replaced that concrete with a mix optimized to survive high temperatures, but it remains to be seen if that will survive a direct blow from the most powerful rocket in history. For the time being, Starbase's environmental permit only allows up to five orbital launches per year, making lengthy post-launch repairs mostly inconsequential. However, if SpaceX ever wants Starbase to rapidly launch multiple Starships back-to-back, -back, essential for in-space refilling, or launch dozens of Starships per year, it's become clear that a deluge system is likely essential. Actually, some part of SpaceX knows that. The design of Starship's first Florida launch pad has already been upgraded to include a giant deluge ring embedded in the ground at the base of the mount. Unusual design aside, the structure's size such that it's almost certainly a high-flow deluge system capable of spraying thousands of gallons of water per second. Three months later, SpaceX appears to be preparing to ship two giant deluge manifolds and some deluge plumbing from Florida to Starbase. SpaceX intends to retrofit Starbase's existing orbital launch site with a giant deluge system, the process would likely take months and render the pad more or less unusable from start to finish. Alternatively, Musk recently reported that SpaceX intends to build a rocket test facility at a separate property it purchased in South Texas. Located miles from the Starbase launch pad, the former gun range could potentially allow SpaceX to test Starships and Super Heavy boosters without disrupting orbital launch preparations and taking over Starbase's only orbital launch mount. Perhaps it's not a coincidence that the same site currently used for storage and limited Starship tank testing, already hosts some smaller parts of a potential Starbase deluge system. Regardless, it's clear that significant changes are coming to Starbase and its associated facilities. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.